wonderful prayer. I pray that you all feel the power and the move of the Holy Spirit. To our brothers and sisters who may view this message and this Sabbath lesson today. Uh, today is, it, it, it gives me great joy. Uh, it's a great honor and a privilege to come before you today on the Sabbath. I want to say Shabbat Shalom. I pray that the Most High's perfect peace be upon you and your family as we endure and not only endure, but we triumph in everything that tries to come against us. We are victorious. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Yeshua. You are the blessed and set apart of the Most High High. And He loves you dearly. Today we're going to discuss, and I got some notes here. Um, let me say this. I know uh, before the, the camera we prayed in, but I just wanted to, as the camera's recording, I want to acknowledge the Most High Haya in the name of His dear Son, Yeshaya, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And we bless you and we love you, Most High. We ask that you would anoint this message and that I ask you, specifically and personally, that you would give me words of wisdom to be able to convey and articulate the message. It's your word. This is not a big word or something of deep prophecy, but this lesson today is titled, it's titled, Alter Eagles Versus Putting On the New Man in Christ. The New Man and New Woman in Christ, who we are. So I pray that this word that goes forth, that it doesn't fall on deaf ears. Uh, I pray that you would be encouraged and uplifted and empowered in the faith today and always. And that ultimately, that it continues to strengthen your bond in the body of Christ. And that it reaffirms that the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you, guiding and leading and teaching you. Not that you should need any man to teach you, but the Holy Spirit indwells in us all and the Most High opens His Word up. I pray to our Heavenly Father that He would open all of our eyes, the eyes of our understanding, open our ears up today so that we can receive His Word today and that, it, that He makes us good ground or good soil so that the word would spring forth and bring much fruit. So without further ado, I'm going to do a quick recap of the last two Sabbath lessons. Those lessons, and I told all of us here present, I said, these lessons, they really minister to us if we ever forget or find ourselves in a time not actually applying it to ourselves. I thank the Most High that He's given us... Um, or allowed us the space and time to be able to record this and go back and read it. Okay, so that way we could be on one accord and that we that we could be on one accord. Alright? Now, in the last two weeks, we learned first, two weeks ago, actually that would have been three weeks ago, but it's the third weeks, we did a lesson about tendencies. And a tendency is a characteristic of a person. That's what tendencies are. Okay, one, if you're a spiritual person, you would lie to your tendencies, you have to be the new man. This is also applies to today. If you put on the new man or the, the inner man or inner woman within you have been strengthened, you're putting on Yeshua, you're putting on Christ. So those tendencies, if you're feeding the, the spiritual man or woman inside of you, you're going to lean towards the things that are of the spirit. If you are in the flesh or a carnal minded person or the, your tendency is to act out in the in the carnal then you're going to do carnal things and you will miss all of these spiritual things because the spiritual things are spiritually discerned and they'll go right over you and, and me too and to, and to any of us if we don't first come in the fear of the most high 
and ask the Most High to open up the eyes of our understanding. With that being said, I've said in the past that our thoughts turn into words. You guys remember me? You know where I'm going with this. Our words turn into actions. So we need to be careful of the things that we're thinking on or imagining or thinking about and the words that we're speaking. The blessed scripture tells us that life and death is in the tongue. So you can be speaking life or you can be speaking death. I'm a musician, right? And in past time before, and this now I'm going somewhere with this because I'm going to be talking about alter egos. And I'm going to, if the most high will, wills it, give you some of my own personal testimony. Alright? So, if we are saying things or saying words, those words bring forth whatever we're talking about, whether it be life or death. So, the things that we're bringing forth now, if we're speaking death, then those words would bring forth death. And so the, our very actions, because words become actions, and so now the things that we are involving ourselves in, or those actions, uh, actions or, you know, words become actions, actions become habits, habits become what you're known by. What is your character? That's what we learned about three weeks ago. That was what we call tendencies, right? Characteristics. And a tendency was what? A mindset. Also leading to a strong hold. I'm in the spirit. I'm, none of this stuff is, is scripted, all right? Even when I look over my notes here, right now, I'm not looking over the notes, but this is what the spirit has given to me. So, if we see that tendencies are, are characteristics, and a characteristic is can be a stronghold, when we begin to talk about what we're going to talk about today, the alter ego, and what, where does that develop at, you will come to find out that that alter ego that we build it up as a strong man or strong woman to help us cope and deal with the things in the world or the things that we have experienced in life, right? That has now become the stronghold. The very thing that we have built up to protect or safeguard ourselves has become the stronghold to make us hard in our hearts to where we cannot receive the things of the Spirit or receive Yeshia. Why? Because the follow ground has to be broken up. Now, we know that life can be cold at times and, 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 and you know, deal just a, you know, a curveball. Right? Don't, life can come at you fast. And you're saying, well, this is not going to happen to me again. I'm, I will not allow this. And so, right? I'm not going to allow this. We do learn from our experience, but what you choose to do, or what you choose to do and how you respond to those experiences is all in you. Whether you're going to operate in the alter ego that you have set up, and we're gonna, I'm going to give you the definition of alter ego here in a second, or are you going to put on the new man or woman in Christ and deal with it? Now, going to last week, we learned about knowledge without discipline. And we began to learn that knowledge in itself meant an understanding. And to have knowledge, the beginning of knowledge, the Bible told us, and I believe it was Proverbs 1 and 7, was the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Most High. And so we realize that we live in a time and age now that even the alter ego that we put up would, 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 would put up things in our mind to justify why we do not fear the Most High or listen to the Most High. Because we feel justified, well, you know what? That hurt me that way. You know, if someone does me, me a certain way, I'm going to do them even worse. Right? You take one of mine, I'll take ten of yours. Right? And you say something bad about me, I'll say something even more hurtful about you. You don't like something about me? Well, I don't like this, that, and the other about you. This is what the alter ego would do. And we did it to, to excuse, I guess, bad behavior or, I guess, to justify our wrongdoings. Putting us at odds with the Most High, putting us against the Most High. All right? 
So that's what we learned last week. Knowledge without discipline. Okay? And there are grave consequences. Every people want to just learn knowledge and understand that with knowledge, um, you know, it comes a great responsibility and accountability. Right? To whom much is given, much is required. And we also know that uh, knowledge, the scripture says, knowledge puffeth up. So then people begin to learn things. So we have to ask ourselves, we have to examine ourselves according to the scripture and say, what is truly the motive or the agenda of why we're doing what we're doing? All right? So that's what we learned in the last two weeks. Now, bring it in real time to here and today. We are going to go into talking about the alter ego. Now, I'm going to give you, I guess you want to call this my commentary. This is just what I was thinking this today when I woke up in the spirit, and the spirit was just flowing. So I'm going to share it with you all. Now, it says this. Alter egos versus putting on Christ, or the, the new man and new woman in Christ, right? It is my hopes that the eyes of your understanding would be open to learning how to do the will of the Most High and present each of yourselves, myself including, we present ourselves, right, uh, to the Most High as a living sacrifice to do what's pleasing and acceptable in His sight. When I was once in the world, I tried to heap souls to myself in an effort to become known, right, or to have some benefit in some type of way, basically become popular or gain in some type of way, whether it was financially or by some other means, I wanted to gain. I had to benefit from something. It's almost like you have the hustling mentality. I was in the business of, like many of us may have been, the business of making money. Wanted to make money. Okay, making money. So for every dollar, we make Ten dollars to a hundred, a hundred to a thousand, a thousand to ten thousand, so forth and so on. Money, money, money. Right? That's the business that I was in. And whatever I involved myself in had to be bringing back a dividend. Right? And the whole time, what made me do that? Okay? Now, the reason is, in our environment, when I say our environment, people who have a background of myself, who would be, you know, us Hebrew Israelites, or a so-called African-American, or anyone who grew up in the inner city, or poverty, right? We grew up poor. No doubt about it. Food steps, government cheese, the first of 15, right? So to offset that, and seeing people in, in, in the neighborhood where I grew up at, okay, in, in, in G Parkway, right? It's like, I'm talking about in the 80s, the, you know, the mid-80s. Right? Everyone was smoked out. Okay? Everyone was dealing and hustling and selling dope. Whatever the case is. Gang banging. He was either a hustler or a gang banger. Or banging the set or the, the neighborhood. Right? And so what they had showed us through television for us in our community the way out would be this. Sports or racket. A musician somehow, right? That was it. That's all. That was what we see. So this is what I gravitate in the neighborhood. This is what I. This is my personal testimony. So what I seen. I was. You know, they would say a product of the environment or whatever you would, would call it. And so growing up poor like that, and hearing other people's account in other communities across the United States, in every ghetto in America, and every ghetto across the world. The same thing was happening. The crack epidemic. Right? So, growing up poor, and what some people would call less fortune, we had to do something to mask it. So, you end up getting out there and you hustling out. You get you a double up. And now you in there slanging and doing whatever the case is. Right? Because the people around you, this is what you see. Right? So, as a lot of our people, have grown up in similar situations, grew up financially poor, but we were spiritually rich. No one told us the whole time that we were the people of the book, right? 
So in the community, with all this happening, because what you speak, remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when we sing, we're playing, you know, rap music went from partying and having a voice to telling about our story to now, you know, being straight, sinister and hardcore, rugged, uh, you know, rugged edge lyrics to where, you know, you know, we in the hood, you know, this is what it's about. It's about getting this money. It's about getting this cake. And then in the 90s, it totally went wild, right? Then you got the 2000, 2010, all the way up to current time, 2017. So a lot of our people, what we did growing up poor is we uh, did what we seen in the community, what was being shown to us. This was the image that was presented to us. The people who had money, who had the fresh clothes, <laughs> were the people out there slanging and hustling. And those who, who weren't were the victim of it. And they're not even hurting your own people, by the way. They, you know, began to use drugs, and those drugs, the, the spirit of addiction was running rampant in our community. And our people are people who were once a spiritual people because the powers that be knew this are now being destroyed. To the point being degraded to such low levels to where they'll do anything for a hit. Now that they would do anything for a hit, we also would do almost anything for money. Now I'm speaking the truth here. And we know this, but now we're living in so-called 2017, and yet we see these young people doing the same thing, talking about the same cycle going over and over, these generational curses, trying to destroy our people. And I, for one, when the Most High opened my eyes and ears up, said, that's not going to happen on my watch. So thanks be to the Most High Higher that he we broke he broke the generational curse and lifted it up off of me and has counted me as worthy of putting me in the ministry. And so now this is the things that I rap and I sing about and not only rap and sing about, I prophesy about, bring lessons about. All right? It's a spiritual war. Right? We were a holy, a holy people, but we thought the way of doing it would be just like what we've seen on, um, you know, uh, the, the videos in NWA and, uh, you know, the, the rappers of the East Coast who was doing it, the big gold chains, and you know what I'm saying? The, the, the nice car, the nice rims, the car with the booming systems. They had all the, what they what we perceive as the fly girls, you know, were dressed, dressed up and looking pretty and all of these things. Now, this was the image that was portrayed to us continually, over and over. We would open up the, the OMTV rap magazines and all these things, and, we'll put, and then we would idolize that. Right? So this is what we've seen and what we've experienced. So now, this is what we talked about. No one was representing this for the most part, and those who did, not to say that they, they weren't, but they were very minute, they, they were overlooked. No one put this up on the pedestal and said, this is what this is about. Because, you know, oh, that's those church going people, all right? But if we begin to connect the dots and see that, wait a minute, the, the, the prophecies that are being spoken in the Bible, our condition, it, it describes us to the T. Yeah. This is what's going on. So, what we did, a lot of our people, so the way out that we see that I saw was hustling either in the streets and I would hustle and do whatever I can do because I knew that I could rap, right? I'm rapping in, you know, I can rap, I'll rap anyone. That's what I, said, I think. I used to have a name Freestyle T. And I couldn't write for anything at those way back when I was, you know, in the teenage years. But I would freestyle and I said, just give me a chance. Just give me in a studio. I get in the studio. I remember I did an album. I did like an LP. I did, I think it was like seven or eight songs. In one night, nothing written, and I mean, I mean, every bar was on point, secularly wise. The talent was there, but we were supposed to be using our talent to praise the Most High, but we were just misled and misguided. So what we did is we adopted an alter ego. The alter ego that I adopted was the same thing that they're showing us on TV. Well, this is who I am. I can identify with this. I'm a gangster. 
I'm a thug. Right? I'm hardcore. Why? Because back in school, what they were showing us is the Mississippi burning, roots, that we were degraded to nothing, that we were just slaves. And now yet the music that everyone's listening to in, in this country is by our people. And so I got a voice in my neighborhood, it was going down. <laughs> right? So let me tell my story. Right? So then I altered eagle, I began to, uh, how would you say? I began to be drawn in into to, to embrace that. I begin to embrace that I am a gangster now. Wait a minute. I'm psycho now. So this is the mindset that any, anyone says anything or look at me in any way, they get the business. If they talk to me in any kind of way, because why? This alter ego is like, look, I'm hard now. When really, underneath, we're really vulnerable. We really, at the end of the day, who wants to be out? Because they told us and, and programmed us, they were programming us by these things, these videos. We really wanted to just get out, but we didn't want to see our parents smoked out and, and dressing bummy and, 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 or whatever the case is and not having the shoes. The, the things that we seen how to get it meant that we either had to be this sports player or this rapper or this musician, or we had to dress a certain way. And the people who had the power and the money was the, the quote unquote who was running the industry, right? So then reality sets in, man. And our neighborhood shootings every night, right? Someone getting killed, you know, at least every week or, you know, every other day or something. This is what really goes on. To this day, it was bad. This is what was going on. And so now we got the mindset that I smoke someone. So that I can't wait to I get me a gun, right? Now we get a gun, no, it's, it's in our mindset to program to hate our own people that live in the same neighborhood because why everyone's fighting for money or fighting over the trap, if you will, the dope trap, or what they call a trap, right? Because why? This is where they get, they got their, no, 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 no. You're not going to walk in front of here. Thank you. You're not going to do that. Don't do that. Don't let it fall. Okay, don't do that. So this is their million dollar spot where they're going to get their money from, and you're infringing on that if you're coming over here. So all these things were caused to destroy us, but these are the things that we embrace. And our alter eagles sucked it up and ate it up. Okay? Now, so we said the way of getting out of this is how people see of getting out of it uh, is to do what? By making it. So we need to make it somehow. So we can use our talent, our likeness. So if there was a, a beautiful woman, she said, well, I'm pretty. I can use this, and I can make it out of here. And they begin to do certain things. And they put on alter egos, right? If someone was skilled or talented at, at something, they would use that, right? So in our minds, to get out of the environment or to make it to be successful, to get out of the hood or the ghetto, if you will, with the roaches and the rats and all this thing that goes on in the hood, what they do? They want it to be to make it, become famous, or being wanted to be rich, or get rich, get a good paying job, get some type of career, right? To take care of all of our financial needs, because why? We've seen our family grow up with less, and we didn't want to be that way, right? Or we wanted to do what? Not only that, um, but we wanted to get people to like us. So if I can say a rapper is be seen to be as cool, then they'll like me. Who's ever the hardest rapper or not just who's ever the hardest in the hood, then the girls are drawn to they want them a gangster or a thug. Right? I'm going to have to bring it out today. Right? So all these things that we did, um, but okay, so we did all these things to get people to like us, but the question is what we need to ask ourselves is at what cost were we doing that? How many people have lost their lives? How many people have become victimized of the alter ego mindset that we all put on? And it may have been for a good reason. I'm going to bring this out now. So, what do we do? At what cost? We covered up what was bothering us or what we didn't like about ourselves. Our 
our lives or what we feel made us unattractive or what hurt us with an alter ego and it seemed to work for a time. But we want but once oh, but once the new feeling wore off. You guys know what the new feeling is? Yes. You're happy about oh man, oh look, I can't even want it your whole time. You thought you wanted the money. You get the money, and there's people who thought they wanted to be rich their whole life. They yep. got the money and died within two months. Yep. People around them. So money's not the answer to everything, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. <laughs> but why the people who have it, because they're not really tripping off money, they got the power. Because of Israel's fall, salvation is now coming to the Gentiles. And the word salvation is twofold, meaning that they have all the things. They have riches and wealth, Right? Salvation also means saved, being saved in deliverance, right? So now, what has happened is now that the newness of it uh, has worn off, what we do here is we are filled left empty, like we have sold our, we've given something precious up <laughs> for the sake of we sacrifice something very dear. In the sake of being accepted or received as what's, what's the norm, or, or to be embraced by the culture. Not our heritage. We were discontinued from our heritage, these people that were in the ghetto, right? We were, we're discontinued from that. So now, all these things, destruction was speaking of life and death, and now it's full blown now. Babies having babies upon babies upon babies. Upon babies. Babies are from babies, right? So what's happening now? We sacrificed that and left us feeling empty or broken. Something was seriously missing. Now we know in so-called 2017, at least I can say I know what was missing. And those of us that are in the know, and the now that knows now, we know what was missing, right? Back then with the ultra ego, we put that up over us to protect us, if you will. Why? Now watch what it's, watch what, what I, this is my commentary. The urge to be seen, so we had an urge to be seen, the macho type, right? Or just, you know, beautiful or successful or someone that was portrayed as having it together, right? We didn't want anyone, uh, uh, we didn't want any, we didn't want to, uh, we didn't want anyone to see our weaknesses, right? So we put up this persona of being or having it together because why? There was a void there. There was a big void there. The void was not knowing what our purpose was. Right? We were misguided. So because of that, we found happiness and pleasure and things that would only suck the soul out of you and break you and leave you empty. All right? By a godless or a society or a world that does not fear the creator. And so because of that, we've learned bad habits. Now our thoughts, all we can think is the madness that's going on. Remember? The, the, prior to the days, well, as in the days ago when the end came, the Most High said the end of all flesh is before me. Why? All mankind thought of every day is what? Say it again? Evil. Sin. Breaking the Most High's command. A thought becomes what? A word. A word becomes what? An action. And if you do that action enough, it becomes a habit, a stronghold. And that habit becomes who you are. So our altered egos are things that we put up because society or we were treated wrong or broken from whatever it was became the same thing to hold us down. Now watch, watch where this is going. We all need to look at whatever it is. If it's you out there, brothers and sisters, that's something that held you. Look, look, what, look what, what I'm about to bring up. So, all those things that, that we labeled or, or that we thought that we wanted, okay, whatever you want to label it, macho, successful, beautiful, sexy, uh, uh, just smart, whatever it is, strong, courageous, bold, champion, okay? So, those particular things left a big void there. And 
nothing could fool it. And the void was from, here's where the void came from. A lack of sense, or a lack of senses, a lack of, a lack of purpose. We didn't know that you had a purpose. You, to, to our sisters, you weren't to be some, some guy's trophy or guys sleeping with all these guys. And for, for the men, you weren't to be some player, some pimp, some hustler, some gangster, some thug, some killer. That's not what the purpose was. But we thought that's what it was because this is what we learned in the culture. Right? The whole time hurting us as a whole, as a people, destroying us, having the Most High God angry at us, allowing the curses and the destruction to perpetuate it because this is what we were speaking, this is what we were thinking, this is what we were doing. Right? So, what do we do? Because of the lack of sense, uh, lack of senses, uh, of, of purpose, if someone heard us, we were going to be sure to never let anyone get close to us again and ever hurt us so bad the way we had just been hurt. Okay? Why? Because we just couldn't bear the pain. So as a defense mechanism, we begin to believe we were this person, that alter ego. 